there's been something fundamentally wrong in Wellington for a long time, um, and the suggestion is that there are a whole series of immature councillors, and that's the real reason. Um, the latest pronouncement from Tory Fano in the last 24 hours is that, well, people just need to grow up. Uh, they need to get a bit more mature. Uh, that New Zealand, that Wellington has got no real problems that can't be solved if councillors just simply um, put on their maturity pants before they came to council meetings. Well, joining us to, to, uh, to talk about that, and probably because he's one of those persons who is pantless in Tory Fano's world, is Councillor Tony Randall, and he joins us for our letter from Wellington. How are you, Tony? Are you wearing pants? Tony? I'm good. I, I want, is being pantless a step up from Riff Raff? Uh, mm, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, the, the problem with pantless is it sort of suggests in a wider sort of context that there's something sort of mm, seedy about you as well before you were just sort of slightly criminal. Oh, yeah, well, so CD's worse for me because, you know, mm. yeah, let's not go further on this one. Let's no, actually I won't. Talk about but, uh, really. Well, n nevertheless, I mean, you are being accused of immaturity, you and the other councillors that don't, aren't there. I can't see that that's going to improve council cohesiveness over the next wee while, can you? No, no, I think, um, I, I think we need to, if we're going to get on, you know, move away from the name calling with each other, and uh, and really just say that we're all councillors around the table and we need to work together. And um, but I, I will I will have one little barb back, and that is I don't think spending lots of money is a sign of maturity. I, I think actually being frugal and responsible is a sign of maturity, and and that's where I'm coming from. Yes, and to be fair, that's what you got elected on, and that's what you're doing, and unsurprisingly, that's the philosophy you've pursued. Um, are you any closer to solving your problem that? would seem from outside his point of view to be intractable, which is that you have to spend less money now that you're not going to be uh, selling your 34% in the Wellington Airport. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased because the council's now in a place where it should have been during the long-term plan, and that's to look at making some serious questions on some of these marginal, you know, project. I mean, let's face it, when you barely have enough money, you don't have enough money to fix the water infrastructure, what are you doing implementing a flash citywide green waste recycling program? Um, that's, that's uh, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be great if they go ahead and do that, but we can't afford it. Um, and that's the question now that is before us. We're now actually where we should have been in the long-term plan, and that is, Let's look at these uh, agenda different projects and uh, and let's look at what is most important for fixing our city. Um, the other thing, though, that so I'm seems... I'm in heavy place. No, well, I understand that, and at least you can go slashing, but the problem is you've got a mayor and a council that have got a series of intractable um, decisions that they've made. Uh, the best one is the pedestrianisation, I guess, and the Golden Mile project. More businesses are now saying that we're not only going out of business, we've gone. So they're leaving, up and going. Um, and that, that seems almost intractable. There's this new story every week, Tony, and, and businesses that have been around forever saying, we can't survive this. Um, this is the council. They've rooted us and we're out of here. Um, at what point does your council go, yeah, we're actually creating more damage than we're ever going to be able to redress? Well, I think we're going to... I think we're at that point now. Uh, the plan, the officers have told us that the Golden Mile project, you know, which, let's face it, if it goes ahead, a number of businesses through Courtney Place are, are not going to make it. They're just so not. Um, they're struggling now and the roads are open. You know, closing the roads off, diverting traffic away and having diggers jackhammering every day is not the place you want to go for a beer. And so uh, we need to decide right now. The plan, the officers say they're going to sign the contracts for Courtney Place part of Golden Mile next month. And, you know, so the decision time is right now. And the fact mm. that, that, that the money for the projects is now, you know, is a big question mark on it. The fact that a large number of councillors clearly don't favour going ahead with the Golden Mile, because, you know, while the mayor may be determined, uh, some council, many councillors have been listening to the businesses. Many councillors are, 
that maybe were supporters are now saying, well, yes, we can still support it, but maybe now is not the right time. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there was, um, let's say, eight councillors that uh, would be in in favour of just saying let's postpone the golden mile until we've got through this economic hump um, because it's not the priority and you know what we have got as a priority is a lot of water stuff to come into us too so yeah and got, that was the irony you know, this week, i think i saw another another one of your um water um pipes burst and in, in the cbd closed a street or two yeah uh, which again seems to, is such a recurrent refrain and and a reminder that i would have thought tony but it doesn't seem necessary that your mayor gets it. I think she gets it, but she's she's holding on to her agenda, and and, and she knows there's a battle here. And I guess, uh, and this goes back to being the skills of being a good politician and a leader, is to how you whether you bend or you have to be broken in terms of you know changing your, your decision. Um, and you know, but we're having a look. We're not at that point yet. We're having a straightforward conversation. I am still optimistic that we can work it through and that we can make those hard calls. Um, we've just got to go through a process of, of identifying those projects that are potentially on the chopping blocks and and prioritise those. Um, the priority of the majority, this is, you know, you've got, the, you've got four or five of us who are fiscal conservatives and, and you know, are willing to go in and say, let's, let's, stop these big projects because that's where you find the savings is in the big ones um also i'm very reluctant to go and chop also the community projects you know the the three and a half million dollars to upgrade the granada sports uh, granada north sports ground the you know the two something million dollars for the wakefield skate park these things have been long promised um and you've got to cut, cut a lot of those smaller projects to come up with the shortfall and and you know the shortfall, as far as I can tell, is is at least two hundred million dollars. Well, if you're not prepared to chop those, and I see that every councillor's got their own pet project, it says probably depending upon which ward they get come from. But if you're not prepared to chop those, Tony, then surely you're not. You don't have you don't have the the, the balls to be able to do your job, do you? Because you're going to have well, to cut. Well, it's more a matter of saying zero waste. Okay, zero waste. There's $105 million just in that project in capital spend. Just in that project. So to get to 200 million, that one project will get us halfway there. And that's a, that's a climate change project. That's a project that's, that's uh, Tori said that she wants to keep. Um, for me, I'd rather postpone or delete the really big projects. We've got projects that are going to be very difficult to deliver because we've got an enormous amount of earthquake strengthening work to be done. The Civic Square is another hundred million dollars. You know, we could we could postpone it, but um, it, you know, it's a whole piece of the city that's unusable at the moment. Uh, the the shortfall is not enormous, but it's going to really hurt. And and and, and that's what should have happened in the long term plan, uh, going back you know eight months. Um, and now we're having the conversation because. Uh, and we're doing it the hard way. Okay. And that's um, one of the reasons why Simeon is sort of looking at us. Well, and that's the other thing I was going to ask you. The government's indicating that they're still looking at ways in which they might intervene uh, in the Wellington City Council's affairs. Obviously, this is very unpopular with the Labour Party and the Greens who think that the Wellington City Council is doing fine. Thanks very much. It's just democracy at work. Um, and so they, they are opposing that kind of intervention. Um, what kind of intervention would be reasonable, do you think, were the government to decide that, well, you're not so much dysfunctional, but you just need a bit of direction? Yeah, uh, look, I, I think that's a good assessment of where we're at. Um, and so I think that the two levels that would be suitable would be a crown observer or, or as a step up above that, which is a crown manager. Uh, those are the two sort of things. I don't think commissioners are in order. Um, I'm not even sure if Simon wants to take on Wellington City Council's problems directly. And I don't think an early election is in order, given that we're going to the polls in, in under a year anyway. So, um, no, I think, I think if he's going to intervene, then it would be something like a Crown Observer, which is someone who what sits a crown in all the meetings. Do? Essentially what's, a the, what's the difference between a Crown Observer and a Crown Manager, Tony? 
I, well, I'm still learning about this, but a Crown Observer gets to sit in essentially in the, beside the Mayor and, and sits across all of the meetings, can ask questions as if they were the Mayor. Um, and then what and reports back to reports Simeon Brown? Back. Yes, and, and, but also can provide advice. I mean, you'd have someone coming in, you'd think, I would assume, which would be quite experienced in local government and how things would work, would know what good looks like, would know what um, poor practices and poor processes looks like so that they can say, actually, this, this is, you know, you're doing this the right way, we're doing it the wrong way. And certainly that I don't think that that sort of advice, uh, I think the city, it would help the councillors focus if that happened. I, I don't think that would be a bad thing. Uh, not that I can say control with what Simeon does, but also I, the, the step above that is crown manager. So what the crown manager is, is someone actually, as, as I understand, sits between the mayor and the chief executive and, and literally starts controlling and managing the council. And they can actually, you know, have, they can't change councillors' votes, but they can certainly have a very strong influence on the agenda, what goes on the agenda of things, what, uh, and, and, they can even make decisions to a certain extent, I think, in their own right. And so that, those are the two levels that I understand that might that Simeon might be considering. Um, what, a crown manager means he's taking more responsibility for solving the problems. Uh, crown observer is he's, he's got his eyes and ears are in, in the council and possibly someone with some good advice to say, actually, this is, this is what you guys should be doing and why aren't you doing it?